Welcome to the second episode of How to Think Script. We are TOSindicators.com, home of the Volatility Box. The Volatility Box is the most robust thinkorswim indicator based on statistical models built traditionally for large institutions and hedge funds. We break down that barrier and make it available to the everyday trader. Today's video is going to be an answer to a user's question regarding how to build an anchored cumulative advanced decline line for a group of stocks, which you'll see through this video, we turn from a simple indicator into a full-fledged trading system. Uh, shout out to Carlos, this uh, tutorial is for you. Uh, you are the one who asked this question. All right, so if you'd like to skip the tutorial and start playing with the indicator right away, it's available for download for free on our website. Uh, the link is in the description box below. If you'd like to learn how we actually built it, let's get started. So to create a new study, we'll click the studies icon in the top right hand corner, click create uh, and give this study a name. We'll call this uh, anchored cumulative advance decline. Um, and uh, we can now get started. Carlos was a rock star and he already emailed us his starting code. So let's go ahead and paste that in uh, to use as the first block. Great, so we can paste this in with no errors. Uh, and if you're uh, trying to copy along, this code that Carlos sent is available uh, for copy and paste on uh, this uh, indicator's download page, which is in the description. Um, okay, so now that we know that this code has no errors, let's get to his actual question. Uh, so his question is, how do we change uh, the symbols to be user inputs so that if you wanted to say change this from Amazon to Microsoft, uh, you don't need to come into the code and keep changing each instance, but rather can do it from the studies uh, customization menu page. Uh, and so that's that's fairly simple. So if you recall from the first episode uh, for the user to create uh, or to have the, the variable be something that you could change from the study screen, uh, you need to define it using the input method. Here we have uh, six uh, symbols, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, and so we'll create six different uh, variables. So we'll call it input symbol underscore one is equal to, and we'll start, we'll just go uh, down the line uh, and we can just copy and paste this six times or five more times. And we'll change this to be two, three, four, five, six, and then go straight down. So it was Facebook, Amazon, uh, then the next one is Apple, then you have Netflix, and then you have Google, and then you have Microsoft. Okay, so now that we have our six symbols, we need to now replace uh, the the place where right now the quote is represented with the actual variable name and substitute the two. So we'll take the symbol one and copy and paste that in and do the same here. Uh, and now the symbol you'll see if we click OK uh, still shows up as Facebook, uh, even though it no longer is Facebook over here. Uh, and so this is how we do it. And so now I'll go ahead and replace each of these six symbols. Uh, for each of these six, uh, just the same way, <coughs> excuse me, and I'll also copy and paste uh, this Facebook and replace it to say symbol one, symbol two. Uh, so I'll go ahead and pause the video here and do that. So, you know, just watch me do that. <clears throat> okay, so now we have all of these symbols copy pasted in. Um, we also have all of this nomenclature to just say symbol one, uh, and the code is clean once again. And I also renamed uh, the variable that actually plotted um, the line um, from gain to be advanced decline line. Uh, this code is also available, the revised code, um, before the next step if you'd like to follow along from this checkpoint uh, on the download page. Okay, so from here, now we have achieved um, what Carlos's question was, which is to now have the advanced decline line plot for a bunch, a cumulative group of uh, tickers starting from one anchor date, and the tickers can easily be changed just like this. So we could just as easily go from Facebook to let's say um, Twilio, just to, for example, say click OK, and the line should now change, and you'll see that it's now using Twilio. 
Perfect. So we achieved the first goal, uh, but now let's try and make this a little bit better. So how do we turn this from a simple indicator into something that we could use to actually trade? Uh, the way I see that is you would want to first figure out what this line is uh, in representation to what it normally is, uh, also called the average. Um, so let's go ahead and start by taking, uh, creating a new variable, which is the average of the advanced decline line. So we know what it traditionally is for the, say, the past 50 bars or periods. In this case, 50 days since we're on a 50 day chart. Um, so to go ahead and do that, we'll just say advanced decline line, and we'll call this average and we'll say it's equal to the average of the advanced decline line from above uh, over the past 50 bars. Okay, and so now if we click apply, we should see another line populate here, which is the actual average line. Okay, awesome. Let's actually change this back to Facebook. So it's the FANG stocks. Okay, uh, and so now well, let's keep going. So now that we have the average line, we'd like to see um, what traditionally happens when you cross through the average line with, say, a burst of momentum. Uh, and the way I'll, the, the indicator that I'll use to, to measure this momentum is the CCI, which is a consumer confidence index. Uh, and I like to say that above um, a positive 100 reading tells you that there's confidence in this bullish breakout, and uh, a negative 100 reading or worse uh, gives you confidence in a bearish breakout. So using that, let's create, um, let's add in one more bell and whistle. Uh, that essentially lets us now use the CCI to, to add arrows and turn this into an actual trading system to figure out when uh, a crossover might happen from a bullish to a bearish scenario or a bearish to bullish scenario, uh, given a group of stocks. So to start that off, we'll say, and since we're going to want this to plot as an arrow, the signal, uh, we'll use plot, not def. So we'll say plot bearish crossover signal, and we'll say if... Um, the line, if we've crossed below the average line, <clears throat> uh, and on the previous one, we were above it, then, oh, and the CCI is confirming this bearish breakout, so it's less than, greater, less than or equal to negative 100, um, then, plot an arrow at the advanced decline line, uh, and if nothing is true, then do nothing. All right, perfect, so no errors. So now let's copy the same thing and do that for the bullish scenario. And so we'll change this from bearish to bullish and just reverse all of these. Um, so we want the line to be crossing above the average, and previously it should have been below, and we want the CCI confirmation to be greater than or equal to positive 100. Uh, and then we still want it to plot at the same spot. Uh, and so if we hit apply, nothing should happen right now since we don't haven't defined these to be arrows. Uh, and so we'll define them both to be arrows. So we'll say bearish uh, crossover signal dot set painting strategy, painting strategy. Uh, and we'll say just this, if it's a bearish cross, we want it to be a down arrow. Uh, and then let's just copy paste this and change. Oops, whoops, and change this to be bullish. And this time we want the bullish to be an arrow up. Uh, and then we'll set each of their uh, weights to be three. That set line weight, so we can actually see these arrows. And now if we hit apply, we should be able to see uh, actual arrows of when we should get long or short um, this particular, any ticker in this particular group. But now let's actually measure this uh, along with the entire group of tickers that we've made this. So it's Facebook plus Amazon plus Apple plus Netflix plus um, Google plus Microsoft. So if we plot them all as a group together, we take a look when we got a bearish signal. Here's our first bearish signal. Uh, and sure enough, we had a pretty good downfall uh, thereafter. Here's a bullish signal that's recently triggered. Let's see what actually shapes up here. If we go back, 
Uh, here's another bearish signal, uh, September 17th. Wow, and you see what happened to this group of tickers there uh, soon thereafter. So it turns out to be a pretty good, reliable signal. So way to go, Carlos. Pretty nice find. Uh, it's pretty cool. I hope you've seen how we've taken an, a simple indicator, uh, taken things like the average, and you can go ahead and add things like, say, a standard deviation um, or uh, the median or any group of other uh, like linear uh, regression techniques that you'd like to apply to understand um, how to turn this indicator into something more than just uh, one indicator, but rather a trading system. I hope this helped, Carlos. Uh, I'll wrap this episode up here and let you all play with the indicator. Thanks for watching the episode, the second episode of How to Think Script. Uh, as always, use the link in the description box below to download the indicator and this code for free. Uh, and if you have anything that you're looking to build or emulate, feel free to comment below. Thanks, and see you next time.